So first and foremost, what I'd like to do is I'd like to start off by having our AMVETS Post 18 Commander, Frederick Vatter, do the Pledge of Allegiance for us. Please rise. Amos Color Guard. Oh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Commander. Good afternoon, town officials, Supervisor Carpenter, tax receiver, Andy Whitman, dignitaries, family, and friends. Today, June 20th, 2024, marks an incredible day for an incredible woman and her amazing accomplishments, Nina Cooley. The story is, in fact, a testament to the American dream, commitment to country, community, and family that not only embodies the values of the town of Islip, but which also entitled to the recognition and appreciation that it deserves. As a young girl growing up in Brooklyn, Nina knew from early on she wanted to be a mother with eight children. When the United States became involved in World War II, her brother Stevie was drafted, and it was an extremely scary time for her. Nina harnessed her fear and worry for her brother by writing letters to him frequently to keep as close to him as she could while he fought a global war. During that period of time, Nina found the love of her life, Harold, and they married shortly after he came home from serving as a member of the United States Army during World War II. The kind of love Nina and Harold had is the kind of love people only dream of. Nina and Harold started their relationship and their family in Levittown and began her auxiliary membership with AMVETS Post 44 in Hicksville. Nina and Harold's commitment to family and community as well as their investment in the men and women who served our country began to flourish. While married with three children in 1954, Nina decided to run for AMVETS Ladies Auxiliary New York State Historian. After holding office for one year, Nina then became the New York State Treasurer. Nina then decided to run for AMVETS Ladies Auxiliary, New York State Department President, and won. She would become the youngest president in, the, in New York State history. In 1960, while expecting her fifth child, Nina, Harold, along with his twin brother Larry and wife Marge, became small business owners acquiring the Twins Inn Bar and two-lane bowling alley located on Division Avenue in East Islip. After a few years of traveling from Levittown to East Islip, it was at this time they finally moved to East Islip and settled in at 76 Fawn Drive. While working at Twins Inn, they developed amazing community relationships and were happy to have their family together in East Islip while being small business owners. However, the commitment to service our veterans was still burning inside and they witnessed the need for an AMVETS post in East Islip, similar to their Hicksville location. While they were serving customers, they mentioned their new idea to provide a community resource for veterans and their families and would say that the rule is, buy a drink, sign this charter, and become a member of AMVETS. <laughs> AMVETS Post 18 was born. As they developed and expanded their efforts with AMVETS, Nina and Harold did the same at home. In 1961, Nina's husband Harold built a pool with his bare hands. Back then, it was the only house on Fawn Drive with a pool. All the kids on the block spent summers at the Coolies. Over the winter, the pool stayed open so the kids could ice skate. And of course, Nina would make hot chocolate for everyone. On any given Sunday morning, Harold would ask Nina, how many? Referring to the amount of kids that slept over the night before. Nina would give him the head count and he would return with rolls and buns from the bakery. In 1980, Nina decided to start every Wednesday in summer as Graham's Day. It started with her children bringing her grandchildren, to her grandchildren bringing great-grandchildren, to her great-grandchildren bringing her great-great-grandchildren. The pool is still open today, and every summer Wednesday will always be Graham's Day. With continued efforts by Nina and Harold to follow through in their commitment to our veterans, 
Anvis Post 18 was formed in 1963 in East Islip. The clubhouse would be formed at 85 Division Avenue, located inside Twins Inn. Membership to Post 18 soared. Their commitment to always backing the men and women in uniform was unparalleled, and it made it their mission to help. It was a team effort, and they loved giving back to their country. During this time, Nina founded and established the Ladies Auxiliary Post 18. In 1965, she became the first charter president with 18 initial members. Post 18 would eventually have a home at 141 Carlton Avenue in East Islip with three bingos a week and once a month on Saturdays. Nina would sell her jackpots and specials for the players as well as work in the kitchen serving rolls, bagels, danishes, and hot beverages. Anvits Post 18 <clears throat> would also serve as the site for the annual Memorial Day Parade where they had their own band and twirlers. At the end of the parade, the Post would provide hot dogs and drinks for the community and their families. Anvits Post 18 would also be the site for so many dances, craft fairs, and fundraisers. They would also host children's Halloween, Christmas, and Easter gatherings for all to enjoy. Although Nina held many positions during her time with the Post, the closest to her heart was Americanism. This position was so important to Nina because her parents emphasized the significance of being an American and how important it was to their family growing up in Brooklyn in the 1930s. However, Americanism started the moment her brother went to war and Nina wrote letters to him. She used that experience and the hope it provided to her brother during a tumultuous time and recreated those same experiences for thousands of American soldiers across the world. She would write these letters for over 70 years. Nina sent Christmas cards, care packages, and developed an unbelievable relationship with these soldiers. We have all experienced witnessed and read some of these letters sent back to Nina that she in fact saved these young men and women's lives. The hope and happiness she provided was remarkable and inspiring. Nina was responsible for integrating the services and programs she provided to our veterans and created a beautiful bridge between AMVETS Post 18 and our local school districts. She implemented flag poster and essay contests. Many of the community veteran connections you see now can be credited to the work that Nina has done in this community. Her life's work has been to create relationships and treat everyone, no matter what their situation, as family. Nina was mom to many, many people. With all of these accolades and awards at every level of government, Nina was uncomfortable with being acknowledged. Nina did what she loved and wanted nothing in return. She loved everyone for who they were, never judging, and always seeing the good in everyone. Her ideology never shifted, as she felt everything achieved was a team effort. Nina would say, you see the apple on top of all those apples in that basket? It's on top, because the apples underneath are holding it up there. All this while creating and nurturing eight children, 22 grandchildren, 36 great-grandchildren, and eight great-great-grandchildren. We all knew she had a heart of gold, and there was no better feeling in life than knowing you are loved by Nina. We have all been given an amazing gift of having Nina in our lives. Nina's passing on June 24th leaves a tremendous hole in our lives and our communities. Nothing will ever truly replace the presence of Nina. She has provided monumental services that will continue to reverberate throughout generations. Today, we have the opportunity to honor Nina in a truly epic way. At this time, I'd like to invite up our Islip Town Supervisor, Angie Carpenter. Thank you so much, Gary. Just listening to Gary talk about his grandmother, um, if only everyone that comes by Nina Cooley Way would live their life that way, how much better we would all be. She embodied the spirit of service, patriotism, and unwavering dedication to our nation's veterans and their families. 
Along with her husband, Harold, a United States Army veteran, Nina had a lifelong commitment to serving veterans throughout their involvement with AMVETS. Throughout her years of service, Nina's leadership and passion for serving veterans shone through her numerous roles within the AMVETS Ladies Auxiliary, where she made history as the youngest New York Department President. Her tireless efforts extended far beyond her official duties as she worked to support veterans and their families in countless ways. For over 60 years, Nina called East Islip her home, where she and her husband started a business that would eventually become the first home for AMVETS post 18. Today, Nina's legacy lives on through her loving family and the countless lives she has touched through her tireless efforts to support veterans and their families. It's with great pride and honor that we symbolically rename the intersection of Fawn Drive and Grenadier Lane as Nina Cooley Way, ensuring that her memory and service will forever be remembered by our community. As you pass by Nina Cooley Way, may you be inspired by her lifelong dedication to serving others and the sentiment that so guided her life. One flag, one land, one heart, one hand, one nation evermore. God bless Nina. And I just can't help but think the future generations, not just her grandchildren and great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren, but everyone who goes by that way are going to look up and say, Nina Cooley, who is Nina Cooley? And why did they name a street after her? And we have to keep that legacy living on and on. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here today. This is an incredible turnout, and it really speaks volumes to Nina and how she lived her life. Uh, with us today, we also have from the town uh, our tax receiver, Andy Whitman, who I know is a family friend. I know he's just pleased to be here today. And um, I want to thank all of the members of the town board who unfortunately could not be here today, but all send their best wishes. Thank you. Uh, I do want to say, too, um, in, in mentioning Andy, when I first started this process, I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, I, I knew that I had to go through the town, but I didn't really exactly know how to do it. Um, Andy and I have been friends for a number of years, and he was the first person I reached out to um, to start the process. And whether he knew or did not know, he made sure that he found out. He walked me through the process in every single way. Uh, and. I really do owe him a debt of gratitude for helping this, this process play out because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have known, known where to start and now we're here uh, at the finish line. So I thank you very much. I have no idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> at this time, I'd like to introduce the president of AMVETS Ladies Auxiliary, Miss Barbara Chapman. Good afternoon, everyone. This isn't normal to, for me, but I would just want to say we all love Nina so much. Nina and her husband, Harold, came to East Islip around the 1960s. They both got involved in the community through AMVETS, the AMVET family. Nina basically got her whole family involved with AMVETS and fell in love with working for her veterans and the East Islip community. While raising her many children, she showed them the importance of community support, as well as taking care of our veterans. Her children all supported their mother's projects. I don't think there is enough to be said about Nina in regard to family and the AMVETS, which was definitely her second family. For one, the AMVETS have a program called Americanism, which of course was right up Nina's alley. So she went to the AMVETS and asked for permission to chair it. Of course, the men said, go for it. And this is exactly what she did, tirelessly. She made sure we had thousands of Christmas cards. I know one year it was 4,000, ready to send to our troops each year. 
She was even known to buy out the dollar store of their boxed cards if necessary. And of course, the auxiliary ladies assisted in writing them. She was always sending care packages to our veterans, probably at least two or more a week, all throughout the year. Enjoyed writing letters and answering all those that wrote back and sharing with her auxiliary at our monthly meetings. Always made sure we did not overlook anything for our veterans. She was also recognized at the national level for her dedication and hard work for her boys. Uh, she always supported our auxiliary programs. For one, at our craft and vendor events, we had something called a fishbowl. And she tirelessly cut and folded tiny little pieces of paper to put in a bowl so people could buy them and hopefully get a number inside that would earn them a prize. Uh, there were probably a hundred pieces of paper or more she cut up. And she wrapped all the little gifts she supplied. Everyone enjoyed it, especially the children. Nina was so dedicated and adamant about unity among the AMVETS and their subordinates. Currently, that is the auxiliary, the sons of AMVETS, and the riders. We must work together and continue to assist and recognize our veterans like a family. Thank you, Nina, for being such a great example. Thank you. Well, it's, it's certainly been an honor uh, for our family to be able to, to memorialize Nina in such a fitting way on this beautiful day. Many of the people here may not know, but over the years, Nina would make mention that she would put certain events in her book. We were never sure if the book actually existed until it was discovered less than a year ago. It was astounding the documents she kept and the events she archived as she hand wrote all of what was written. It recounted events, great memories, and the individual journeys of each of her children and future generations. She made mention of her son, Harold Jr., who is in heaven with her, as well as a loved teacher, coach, mentor, and Suffolk Sports Hall of Fame inductee. In whatever role Nina played, mom, grandma, Graham, her stories were consistent. She married our hero, World War II veteran and hardest working man who provided for his family, and with their boundless love, which serves as a model that each and every one of us should seek and aspire. But how fitting. We are here today, collectively writing another chapter in her book. This title, Nina Cooley Way. It has been an absolute pleasure to share this day with all of you and we would like to deeply thank you for being here to celebrate this incredible woman. As Supervisor Carpenter had mentioned, one of my grandmother's favorite quotes, one flag, one land, one heart, one hand, one nation evermore. Thank you very much. All right, everyone, get your cameras ready. Canvas, present arms. One, two, Three! Woo! Woo!